Hi everyone, so it's me Alfie again. So basically there are many ways to celebrate a life and each can be tailored specifically to the individual being honored as well as their family. If a loved one passed away, you may have questions as to what kind of service to him. Now in this video, I will be talking a little bit about cultural traditions between Indonesia and China and talking about cultural intercultural communications when it comes to funeral or burial procession also in terms of the death of the death ritual these two countries indonesia and china are more likely to have something interesting to discover just like the popular saying that chinese people believe that funeral customs and traditions must be followed strictly or else felt like maybe fall to the family and in the meantime Indonesia itself since it's an archipelagic or Nusantara country the practice may be a little bit different and dissimilar from one place to another and of course certain, fa certain factors such as spirituality nature local wisdoms are the influential things through these burial traditions Yet, they are all seemingly fascinating, interesting, and also attracting to the world's attentions in history. So, first of all, to begin with, I'm going to talk about the funeral ritual in China. Well, a Chinese funeral is themed in solemn beauty and traditions. It's a display of respect and honor of heritage. And custom may vary by geography, and a family's religion and the age as well. Social status and cause of death. Still, all traditional Chinese funerals include certain elements and flow ethic around the length of the visitations, dress code and colors. Traditionally, the role of Chinese families are known to host lavish funeral ceremonies for their loved one who passed away as elaborate funerals help determine status in society in a way. The family plays a key role in organizing the funeral. They may enlist the help of a monk, priest, or another a clergy member who reflects the family's religion traditions, religious traditions. And the traditional uh, mourning period called Sosang so song in is one year and for the first burn uh, for the first bar burn sun up to the three years though modern chinese families observe a period of 49 days during that time the family prays for their loved ones like every week and now we are going to talk about before and after in terms of chinese funeral traditions before the funeral traditions, before the funeral, when a loved one dies or someone dies, there are many arrangements to be made. Among the first things a Chinese family may do is contact a feng shui, a feng shui master to choose the day and time for their loved ones or the date by the uh, funeral and burial. If a, if a grave site hasn't already been chosen, they will ask the Feng Shui master to help them choose symmetry property with location and orientation in mind often on a hill and never under a tree it's common for Chinese family as well to honor their loved ones somebody who died with three days of visitation before the funeral the loved one who will will be dressed in his uh, or her best clothing or a traditional white burial robe. Only loved one who lived to be 80 or older can be dressed in red or other colorful clothing. If facilities allow, the family may choose to stay with their loved one overnight, even preparing meals on site. And this is called show ye. Show ye. Now we are moving to the funeral. At the end of the visitation period, the casket is sealed. 
if family members are present, they will turn their backs because they believe that the souls of the people who see the casket um, being closed will, will be trapped in the coffin. Likewise, at the graveside, family and friends turn their backs on the, on the casket as it is lowered into the grave. During the funeral ceremony, um, the casket stays open. This is considered respectful to the elders and the loved one who has died. And now another important thing is the flower. Chinese funeral flowers, white or yellow, are most often used for Chinese funerals. As white uh, chrysant chrysanthemums symbolize grief. The white iris is traditional for families from certain regions of China. However, in the China of an elder who lived to be 80 or older than that, red flowers and often a red casket interior will be chosen. Both the visitation and funeral may include many large wreaths and sprays of flowers. Uh, they call it like uh, Wang Tuan, Wang Tuan. In fact, it is not uncommon for flowers to fill a room. Wom women in the family often wear morning, morning flowers in their hair. The color depends on the relations to the loved ones. So when it comes to the white color, it indicates that those people are a wife, daughter, or daughter in life as well. And green, it may indicate that the person is uh, grandchildren of the, the dead one. And blue, it means great or grandchildren. And in the meantime, red means like great or great grandchildren. grandchildren. Also, a grieving family may burn incense or xiang throughout the funeral service. They may also burn just pepper or xiang qi, also known as a ghost or spirit money. Though it's often also pepper houses, cars, and other objects, the traditions helps ensure that. The loved one will have the things they need to be comfortable, comfortable in the afterlife. The family may also burn incense or just pepper money at the graveside ceremony and upon returning to the graveside after a few days later. And additionally, funeral guests can be expected to give the grieving family money or tianji at uh, at the funeral or one day prayer. The traditional gift is an odd dollar amount starting at one one or one dollar or one hundred and one dollars in white envelope as well. It may be handed to a family member or put into a donation box. The person giving the gift can write his or her name on the envelope or leave it like anonymous or like blank. In the meantime, when it comes to post-funeral in Chinese traditions, after the funeral service, there is a procession to the grave site or cemetery. Tradition calls for the loved one's oldest son or grandson to lead, carrying a large portrait of the somebody who died and incense holder uh, and the incense holder. Other family members follow the leader. Friends and other guests walk behind the lead the family. Once the loved one's uh, casket has been lowered into the ground and taken into the cemetery, the service ends. If the family is of uh, can Cantonese origin, they give red for loved ones over 80, of course, uh, or white envelopes containing candy and coins to their guests. Leave the bad luck at the funeral and bring good luck home. In Chinese culture, red is the color of good luck, and the coin represents fortune. Before guests arrive home, they should eat the candy and spend a coin to seal their luck. Families in other regions may present guests with the red thread instead. Guests are to take the thread home and tie it to a doorknob to ward off evil spirits.
On the other hand, family and kids of a Chinese funeral wear plain white, uh, plain white and brown burlap clothes, or pima tai xiao. A son or son-in-law will wear a black armband. Western influences have made black attire more acceptable at Chinese funerals. So if you want to wear conservative black dress clothes, you can feel free to do that. There is an exception to these traditions, however, if the loved one died naturally at 80 or older, older than that, the funeral event in a celebration of a long, long life, and guests may wear pink or red to show their happiness. And moving to the different Chinese cultural traditions, Chinese family follow a variety of religious practices, including Hindu and Taoist. Families living in the United States may also combine their cultural traditions with Christian funeral practice. Buddhism is Asia's most widespread religion, and the majority of Buddhists in the United States are Asian Americans. So, Buddhi Buddhist funeral customs vary, but it's common for Buddhist service to include an altar with a portrait of their loved one, where friends and family can bring offerings of candles, incense, flowers, and fruits. A Buddhist service may be pray may be presided, presided over, a by, over by a monk. And an image of Buddha could be placed near the altar. Chanting, uh, Zongting, is the most important aspect of Buddhist funeral as it helps answer the loved one reaches enlightenment in death. How about the witness cremation in Chinese tradition? Chinese people equally accept casket burial, casket burial or cremation, so these both are acceptable. The choice is a matter of personal preference, and some families choose to watch or even participate at the beginning of the cremation. During a witness cremation, watch, uh, which is also called a cremation viewing, family members are brought in, into the cemetery to watch as their loved one or the day their family who died uh, is moved into the into a cremation chamber. In some cases, a loved one in uh, may be permitted to press the button that starts the cremation process. Not every funeral home or cemetery is set up to accommodate a cremation a cremation viewing, but it is becoming more common if this is important to your family. Be sure to bring it up early in funeral planning processes. So that's all. That's all about Chinese funeral practices. So what do you guys think? And now we are moving to Indonesia and all about the burial traditions in it. Since Indonesia is also consists of nu numerous cultural practices. Not to mention that religion is an integral part of Indonesian people. From many traditions when it comes to funeral service in Indonesia, one of them is called Rambu Solo, performed by Tarajan people in Toraja or Tana Toraja. Rambu Solo is a traditional funeral ceremony which aims to respect the spirits in, uh, in returning to the immorality life, Im immortality life, with their ancestors. In a custom that many of us find shocking, the Toraja people keep their dead relatives and at home, feeding and cuddling them, their bodies. Then, when they are finally buried, they dig them up once a year for a celebration. In a mountainous area of Indonesia, the Toraja people which they count their origin is from Sulawesi, Sulawesi province, mummify the bodies of the deceased and care of their preserved bodies as though they are still living. So the Tarajan people believe that after death the soul remains in the house so they so the dead are the dead body are treated to to like to to food, uh, clothing, water, cigarettes or something else. 
Their skin and flesh are preserved from decaying and rotting, which begins with days of death by a coating of formalide, formalide, for, formaldehyde and water. The stent is strong, so the family store dry plants beside the body to mask the, uh, the odor. For the community as well, preserved body brings good fortune, so family go to great lengths to ensure those who have died remains in the best possible shape. Tarajan's people learn from a very young age to deal with death, and this is may, uh, may have them to accept it is as part of their journey of their life. Talking about the majority religion in Indonesia, is Islamic, in Islamic tradition, the funeral service is a bit different to Chinese or even some other local practices in Indonesia. As Islam is one of uh, is, is Islam is the majority religion in Indonesia, the Islamic faith has a strong belief in the afterlife. Muslims follow the principle that the way a person acts throughout their life will determine what happens to them after they after they die. If they perform good deeds and follow Islamic religious codes, they will be re rewarded with entry with, with, with entry to paradise or heaven on the day of judgment. On this day, Muslims believe the world will end and the dead will experience eternal peace. So paradise or eternal suffering, which is hell. How does Muslim funeral works? Islamic funerals are extremely spiritual events and central to Muslim communities. In addition to offering comfort for the grieving, a Muslim funeral service provides an opportunity to pray to Allah or the Islamic God to have mercy on the deceased. Immediately after the death of a loved one, somebody dies, their eyes and mouth are closed and the funeral on the body is covered with a white sheet. According to the set of funeral rites and rituals, the body is washed three times by close family or the family members of the same sex. So these actions we call wusu. The body is then positioned with the left hand on the chest and the right hand on top of that. So like this, before being uh, shrouded with large white sheets and tied with ropes. So this kind of a cloth we call it kafan. Since Muslims believe in the physical resurrection of the body after death, the faith prohibits cremations. Additionally, although aut autopsy is usually forbidden in Muslim communities, they believe it desecrates the body. Organ donation is generally accepted as it can help save lives. So what actually happens in Muslim funerals? Firstly, mourners will congregate at the mosque or masjid to recite Salat al janaza or special pray to the dead one. The Islamic funeral prayer which seeks pardon to the deceased and all dead Muslims. During this, everyone must face toward Mecca or we call it Qibla, the holy center of Islam, and from at least three rows. After the prayers are complete, the body is transferred to the chosen burial site. For burial Muslim, for Muslim burial, the grave should be perpendicular to Mecca, as it is the Qibla, with the deceased body positioned to their right side face, the Islamic holy city. As the body is lowered into the grave, the congregation say a prayer. Wood or stone are laid down to prevent the body touching the dirt. Lastly, each mourner places three handfuls of soils into the grave. Large or decorative headstones are not usually allowed. So a small stone or marker is left to identify their final resting place. On average, an Islamic funeral lasts between 30 and 60 minutes. The Muslim funerals, uh, the Muslim funeral rites a rites are led by an imam or Islamic leader and typically include funeral prayers and several readings from Quran recitation. recitation. And if we talk about the dress code, 
what to wear to come to Muslim funeral. All the attendees, male or female, are expected to dress modestly and adhere the to funeral etiquette. Men usually wear a shirt and trousers, while women wear a long sleeve top, ankle length skirt, and a headscarf. Additionally, shoes must be removed when entering a mosque prayer hall to ensure that no impurities are brought inside. For your information, traditionally only men are allowed to attend the burial. However, some Muslim communities permit women to attend it. And last but not least, what happens after a Muslim being buried? After the funeral, the family will gather and receive mourners into their home to help ease the burden. Many guests bring food offerings for the first three days after the funerals. The period of mourning usually lasts in within 40 days, but this may vary depending on the family. Traditionally, the mourning period for a widow is longer, 4 months and 10 days. During this time, they must wear black, remain in their husband's home, and are forbidden to interact with men uh, they could potentially marry. So that's all I can tell you guys all about the Indonesian and Chinese in terms of funeral or burial services. So. There might be a lot of interesting things and bunch of things that we haven't discovered yet in this video. So feel free guys to serve more, to look for more information all about these two countries, similarity and dissimilarities. Hope this video helps you on understanding the culture between Indonesia and China in terms of the, the, the funeral services. Feel free to leave your comments below and thoughts um, so we can interact each other so ขอบคุณครับ see you in next video สวัสดีครับ